What's up? We're back and we're finally doing a temp gauge on the 240. As you guys know, I had a stock gauge. It was horrible. I didn't really know the temperature. I just kind of drove. <laughs> it's not very good to do, but I kind of just wanted to drive. Didn't care. It sounds really bad. It's, I sound horrible, but now we got a temp gauge. Before I had a temp gauge, but this was wired into the stock harness, into the stock temp gauge, which how I read my temps. But I didn't know the exact number. It was really bad. And I procrastinated. I didn't listen to anybody because I'm stubborn. And now we're back here with Clark, my good friend Clark. Went and got a proper temp gauge at the store. And now we're wiring it into the same thing. And the sender's right here. And then I'm going to wire it to an actual temp gauge, water temp gauge. I'm going to mount it right on my pillar, right there and be safe and also i'm gonna paint the bumper today because this thing got destroyed at the compound that's like crap so no oh yeah i also put my new corn overflow here now it looks nice and painted not more no more water bottle bull crap so clark we we were gonna buy a whole another new sender but i saw the thread this thingy right here in the uh gauge we got and i was like i think it's the right size turns out we came home and it fits perfectly, so thank God. So now, Clark, we went and bought, went to Harbor Freight, bought all the wiring stuff. I've, I've worn in the past, like, just buy, I mean, stupid camera. Okay, I've worn in the past just to buy shit. Like, don't just be like, oh, it's too much money, blah, blah, blah. I guarantee you, you'll be way happier to have the stuff and to not have the stuff. So, went to Harbor Freight, bought this. This was $8 with this. If you go to Lowe's, you get this and like two of these for $20. So Harbor Freight is definitely ideal to go to and get cheap parts and, and accessories for cars or any kind of work stuff. So if you have Harbor Freight or any kind of tool shop in your town, definitely recommend that to buy stuff there. But Clark already started taking this apart. So putting the new thingy in there and then we're gonna wire, we're gonna cut this and then we we'll use these, right? Or new wires. Yeah, we're gonna use, since this is a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. I guess it's like an, like a open circuit style of sensor. It also has to have a ground, but usually these are put in like engine blocks that are also grounded to the chassis of like the car. So since this is on two rubber hoses that are not connected to the chassis of the car, we're gonna have to add a ground. And this one is a two, style, or a two wire style. And this one has, one of these wires goes directly like right here to the chassis and it's already grounded. So yep. this one I'm like, using this little connector piece and we're just going to kind of make a ground for it and it's going to work and it's going to be great. Cool. While well, I was at Grid Life, I was at the Hall Tech ECU booth and Andrew hooked me up with some dope work gloves. You can work, use them as driving gloves, but they're mostly for work gloves. So I'm going to wear them right now, but shout out to Hall Tech and Andrew for uh, giving me these dope gloves. So now we're connecting the, I guess you could say the positive side of this sensor, which is just this top piece and then it's separated by some plastic or some silicone, and then this is gonna be our ground that we're connecting later. All right, so Clark was wiring while I was in the house uploading yesterday's video. So now the video's up, and now back out here, and he got this pretty much almost done, so. Yeah, so this, this is the ground. This is our positive lead from the uh, gauge itself. So we're about to just run this wire all the way up through the firewall into the gauge. Yes, sir. Now, yes, Clark's pretty much doing it for me because I don't know how to do it. I understand it, but like the only thing I can't do with cars is wiring. I just don't understand it. I do. I don't even, I don't even think that's that's like that doesn't even matter. It, it doesn't matter. I'm just explaining to you guys. Like I work no, my no, own cars. You guys all know. Yeah. But like I just wiring it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't go through my head like it should be. I don't, I don't know. One day I'll learn. I, I just gotta try it. But like with me, I'm not patient enough. So it's like. Yeah, that's why I have my friends help me do it. <laughs> Honestly, that's why I have them do it. But I'll learn one day. I just like driving because driving is more fun. <laughs> if you guys are wondering what good tape is, not this. <laughs> I mean, I have it on hand because I bought a lot of it. From, I bought a lot of it from Harbor Freight. But like, if I brought anything else but Super 33 electrical tape to Adam's house, he'd be like, "No, take it back and get the good stuff. You know better." I'm just like, "Well, I didn't know, but now I know." But Super 33 is the best electrical tape you can possibly get. This stuff works, but it's not as sticky. It doesn't last as long. Alright, 
so the bugs quieted down. I can maybe film now. But if they start fishing again, I'm not filming. Alright, so back in the cockpit. So Clark is tapping into the power for all the other gauges for the new gauge. Because you have to put a light bulb in the new gauge, so it needs power, right? And you have to have power for the actual gauge itself, so... Now he's stripping these wires with little cutters because those things suck. Yeah, so. well... Yeah. Yeah. These are, these, are, these are good for about like 10 uses and then they bend and then they're bad. But uh, during those 10 uses they're great. It's kind of crappy for the price though. Eh. All you're paying for is the butt connectors. Mm -hmm. If you want a real one of these, you just buy one. Alright, so Clark has the wire out and the, the gauge wired into the, uh, well, into the pod and then they all wired up. Now all he has to do is what, connect it and that's it? Yeah, we're just plugging it into the gauge and it's time to test it. Yeah, cool. Alright, so got the gauge in all wired up. It has power, now we're hoping it reads. <laughs> that's pretty much it. This car sounds so good. Guys, my temp gauge works. I have a temp gauge now, a proper temp gauge. Hell yeah, I'm stoked. Thank you, Clark, again. All right, so I have a KVD bumper, and when you paint these bumpers, like I guess you gotta use some kind of sticky paint, some kind of, some kind of something to make it not chip. And I painted this bumper like at least four times now. And I'm gonna repaint it again because it looks like crap. But I don't know what the trick is. I heard you have to you make the paint sticky. Well, I'm not a painter. I have spray paint and primer and this. So I'm gonna sand it down and just do a quick respray on it so it looks decent. Bumper is repainted, kinda, and then the car is red, but there might be a different color red now. God dang it. Dang, nabbit. Ah, uh, okay, it's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. But anyway, that's it for today's video, guys. I got a new temp gauge in, finally, so now I don't have to worry about overheating or worrying if I am overheating or not and driving sketchingly and not correct. But thank you to Clark. Wait, once again, temp gauge is in, bumper is repainted, Another day, another filming video for 240s that break all the time and get hot. So, but once again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure like and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hit, no hit the notification thingy. Yeah, notification gang, Jay Z gang. Okay, bye.